let's talk about felting fibers. So a lot of wool these days is just called roving, but it isn't really roving. So let's talk about three types of wool that you might find when you're looking around for fibers to either spin or to felt. So we have top, we have roving, and we have batting. So top, really true top, is combed so that all the fibers are going in the exact same direction. Now, true top is combed by hand and it's used to make truly worsted yarn, which is very smooth and it has very little loft to it. This here is most likely commercial top, so it's m almost all going in the same direction, but you can even see, I hope from this, you can see that the fibers are all going in the same direction for the most part. So this is top, great for spinning, um, a little bit trickier for felting. It certainly can felt, but it's not your top choice. Huh. All right, next we have roving. So I think looking at these two together, you can see roving also comes in long strips. It can be as thick as your wrist or thinner, um, but it's been brushed, not combed. So. The fibers are generally going in the same direction. If I were to pull, they're generally going in the same direction, but there's still quite a bit of crisscross happening in my fibers here. And when we are wet felting, we want those fibers to crisscross. That's gonna help them like intermingle together and form that tight locking felt fabric. So roving is definitely going to be easier to wet felt with than top. It still comes in these long, long strips, but it's got a lot more crisscross to it. And then finally we have bat. So wool batting, uh, this is just a small piece that I've pulled off. It comes in great big sheets that are usually rolled up um, to be shipped or or packaged in some way but wool batting has been run through a drum carter and so these fibers are really really crisscrossed already they're not trying to get them to go in the same direction they are crisscrossed all different directions which is great for wet felting this is what we're trying to achieve so for laying out your uh, wet felting projects, I strongly recommend using BAT if you can find it. Um, it just makes the layout process so much easier and it's really easy to tear. Like if I wanna tear a line right here, I can just press down and I can really easily make a clean line right where I want it to go in any direction. It's just so easy to work with the batting and so, when we think about wet felting projects with students, I'm always looking to set them up for success. That's why I prefer to work with wool batting. But if I can't find wool batting, I would definitely choose wool roving, which can also be, you know, drafted out with your hands. And then you'll just need to make sure when you're working with batting, you can't lay out an entire sheet in the way that you can with, um, with that. So when you're building up your layers uh, with roving, you wanna make sure that you crisscross the fibers. So if my first layer, my fibers are going horizontally, my second layer, I'll want to put them vertically, horizontal and vertical. So I'm adding as much crisscross as I possibly can with my layers. So my next one would be horizontal. So I hope this has helped to clarify for you a little bit the differences between wool top, wool roving, which usually has a little bit of twist, and wool batting. All right, let's get to some felting.